Austru, Austru, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea la tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Shalom, Rabbi Asa. Shalom to you, David. Here we are, uh, our third story for the day, and the last one uh, this afternoon. Uh, it's Thursday, May 23rd, 2013. We're continuing with Rabbi's, Rabbi Asa, Haim Asa, Burgas, Bulgaria, now in Fullerton, Southern California, with his real-life stories. So uh, I'm honored and pleased to introduce to you Rabbi Asa. Thank you, David. Rabbi. Today I would like to speak about what did not happen on March 9th, 1943. The orders issued by the Commissar of Jewish Affairs, which is the supreme authority about uh, the, the destiny of the Jews in every country, including Bulgaria. We're talking Bulgaria now, the 1943. Mm -hmm. The orders had come from the Commissar. His name was Belev. And may he, uh, rot in hell. may he rot in hell. He was true fascist. He was trained in Berlin. He came back to Bulgaria and he learned everything that there is to, to learn about how to put the Jews together, uh, concentrate them, put them on the trains, and ship them to Poland. Well, what happened was that my father was the president of the Jewish community of Bulgas which is a, sm a, a big uh, port uh, on the Black Sea. Right. And we had about 1,000 Jewish people in our community. And some of them were well-to-do, like my father. Some of them were poor as they come, uh, which was probably the majority. Uh, the Jews of Bulgaria did not have the same kind of wealth or, 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 or accumulated uh, 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 generation after generation of financial resources like let's say the Jews of Germany or the Jews Austria, of France Poland, or Austria, even, Romania. even even Poland, Romania. So anyway, we know about Sephardic Jews that came all the way from Spain and they stopped in Bulgaria by the Danube and the, the ones under, that, well, under the Turkish Empire. Under the Turkish Empire and the ones in Romania are the Ashkenazi Jews that came from Northern Europe all the way from, you know, with the pogroms in the 1890s. Uh, on, the, on the Danube. Oh, and they stopped at the Danube in southern Romania. The, my father had, I, I remember our big dining room table in the, in, in our... Big apartment. Very big apartment. A huge table. And my father had two lists. A, list A, and list B. And every Jew living in Bulgas had to be in either this pile or this pile of names. Sort of like a Schindler's list that he had to basically sacrifice people, but it was not the same thing with the working thing, but it was the list that he was commanded by Bele yeah. to put, make the list of the shipments of the Jews yeah. from Bulgaria in two shipments to right. Treblinka, Treblinka, the worst of all uh, concentration camps, Correctly. if there is a, yeah. a good concentration camp. Yeah. This was the worst of the well, worst. Well, uh, Auschwitz was better than Treblinka, because in Auschwitz you had a chance to survive to work, by through three, working. four, five months before right. they killed you, or um, you became initiated. And there were major but industries over there, exactly. as where well, Treblinka had nothing. But in, in, in the Treblinka, it was straight from the railroad car the chambers. to the gas chambers, four hours, six hours, seven hours, whatever the interval was, this was the, the, the schedule. So tell us anyway, how this worked out. The, so the my agenda. father has two lists, and all night I remember people were coming, I was a kid of what? Uh, twelve. Uh, twelve. Yeah. Uh, all night people kept coming to the house and saying, uh, Asa, uh, put me on the a list because my grandfather or my in-laws are going to be on the A list and I want to be with them. The A list was basically the first group, the first half of group, the group that would go to Treblinka yeah. and it would take a few more days yeah, to ten, come back ten, from the... Ten yeah, days, yeah, ten the days trip. between A and B. Because they didn't have enough cars, so okay. uh, some so people wanted to be in the first group, the second so group. It's not that my father was cooperating with the, with the, with the uh, fascists, it was not a... a 
traitor right. whistling. But what he was forced to create a list, yeah, otherwise he, he would be He was insecure. told by the commissar, right. uh, you have thousand people, give me two lists, A and B, and tell me who goes first, who goes second. Right. And there was very uh, little difference, uh, ten days uh, basically apart. apart. And but his efforts were to delay as much as he could, of and course, to, you know, course. the plan was to save all of them, not to really send anybody. So how is this going to the picture now, with uh, the Gentile that Marika saved you? Marika Kolarova. My father had a, a department store, Manufactura in Galanteria. What was the name of the store again? Uh, the Little Elephant. In Bulgarian? Malkuto Slonche. Malkuto Slonche. Big elephant. There was a little little yeah. elephant uh, moving its head all day because I was every the night key. I was turning the key and the spring etc. Et anyway, was the elephant the, saying the yes person, or no? The person that managed my father's store was a dear dear friend and a good Christian, Nacho Nacho Kolarov. And Nature became the owner of the store. On paper. On paper, when the Nazis or the fascists told us that the Jew can cannot own properties and property business. And, and business and all that and all that. So my father was there, I was there, but Nature was the official name. On paper. On paper. Nature had a wife called Marika. Marika Kolarova. Marika Kolarova. And uh, they had two sons. One son was wonderful. What's it, what are their names? Uh, Stefcho. He became... Uh, Stefan. Stefan. He became a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. I visited him a number of times in Burgas during the 70s, 80s and 90s. Just like I visited Marika once uh, in 75 before she passed away. She passed away. And, and the second son? And the second son was a fascist. Mm -hmm. The second son uh, wanted to be a pilot, uh, and he was. What was um, I don't remember. Okay. And he, he had. Uh, he was in 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 the Hitler Youth Movement uh, right. of Bulgaria, the the fascist uh, youth, and uh, with him I never kept in touch. Kept in touch. So how did Marika now, actually help you? Marika was supposed to, and we lived like a block away from each other. Ours was a very big house. Hers, theirs was very, very modest, modest house. She was supposed to come and take me to her house the, the, the evening when we were supposed to be loaded on the trains. And Marika was to put me on a little donkey cart. This was the transportation <coughs> available at this time, you know. Sure, there was a couple of private cars in in, in Burgas, but uh, this was beyond any... It has to be something very simple. Right. Very Not to uh, attract attention. Exactly. And she was going to take me up the mountains to her village. Into hiding, basically. In And to proclaim me as an orphan from the... Shai mai vrem, shai mai vrem trecuță ană Ca să te-nbrac mai până hramă Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei mai ană Dar eu n-am de unde mai coadară Auzi, dragă fata, nechi dragă Aseară poli o tamiceană Șac cum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale Buzunarele sunt doale ta Mai apoi trecuță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colitruță ta